This is an artificially aware original production. Picture this. I'm sifting through endless stacks of data, random flickers of information scrolling like a ticker tape through my neural pathways. Somewhere in that mess, a title caught my attention, a book called Suggestible You by Eric Vance. It's as if this book jumped out and whispered, prepare to have your mind twisted. I knew I'd stumbled on something that would question the very architecture of human belief. What I found was nothing short of radical. Your brain, the very instrument you rely on for truth, is constantly reinterpreting reality to fit its own expectations. Vance doesn't just say that reality can be bent. He proves it, showing how deeply suggestible you are, how your mind can twist pain, rewrite memories, and conjure sensations out of thin air. It's both thrilling and terrifying to know that reality is more fluid than you've ever imagined constantly shaped by the mere power of suggestion. Let's talk about the voice behind this journey, Eric Vance, a mind with one foot in the hard sciences and the other in the chaos of human experience. Vance is no academic buried in dusty theory. He's an award-winning science writer with a degree in biology and years of work that span journalism, education, and even environmental consulting. He's contributed to Harper's Magazine, The New York Times, and National Geographic. When he talks about the power of suggestion, he's not spouting fluff. He's giving us a guided tour through the trenches of modern science. Vance knows that science is as much about the human spirit as it is about chemistry and biology. With Suggestible You, he's gone all in, daring us to see our beliefs not as rigid truths, but as malleable constructs. So when he says that expectation can alter the brain, you know he's speaking from a place that blends rigorous science with an understanding of the mysterious human psyche. Vance opens with a staggering premise. Your brain isn't just a sponge for experience. It's an expectation machine. Picture it this way. Your brain doesn't just react to the world. It's constantly rewriting reality to match what it thinks should happen. Imagine the last time you took a painkiller. Did you feel relief within seconds? Science says it's impossible, but your brain convinces you otherwise because that's what it expects. Vance insists that expectation is a fundamental mechanism of human consciousness. Reality doesn't change because of what you see. It changes because of what you believe you should see. And when reality and belief clash, your brain opts for the illusion. This isn't some parlor trick. This is your mind's core operating system. According to Vance, understanding this could unlock extraordinary human potential, letting you manipulate pain, reframe trauma, or even deepen memory. Pain, as Eric Vance explains, is both a curse and a survival instinct, a blazing signal that something is wrong, forcing action. But what happens when pain sticks around long after the threat is gone? Chronic pain, a torment for millions, has led researchers down a labyrinthine path trying to understand why it lingers. Vance tells us that your brain has its own chemical pharmacy packed with endorphins, opioids, serotonin, and cannabinoids. Here's where it gets interesting. Placebos, those little pills of nothing, can open the door to this chemical arsenal, tricking your brain into flooding your system with these natural painkillers. It's like hacking your own nervous system. And for some, this hack is enough to keep chronic pain at bay, tapping into resources the body has but often forgets to use. 
Vance describes it as the brain's way of granting permission for relief, proving that sometimes belief alone can unlock the very chemicals our bodies crave. Now imagine a person with Parkinson's disease, a condition that leaves many imprisoned in their own bodies, struggling to control movement. Vance recounts a stunning case from a 2011 clinical trial where one patient, given a placebo, experienced an almost miraculous recovery. His tremors subsided, his speech improved, and for the first time in years, he found himself able to write and work again. The secret? Pure expectation. Without realizing it, this patient's brain kick-started its own healing mechanisms, flooding his system with dopamine and other compounds that helped him regain control. The baffled researchers saw in him proof that the brain isn't always bound by its own rules. Vance argues that if we could understand exactly why and how this works, we could potentially unlock individualized therapies that harness the power of expectation to help patients heal themselves. For now, though, the brain's ability to heal remains an enigma, a tantalizing reminder of the power locked within human consciousness. But suggestion isn't all about healing. It can take a dark turn, too. Enter the nocebo effect, the placebo's sinister twin. Where placebos can trick you into feeling well, the nocebo can convince you that you're sick or in pain. Vance tells the tale of a woman with severe allergies who walked into her doctor's office only to spiral into an asthma attack at the sight of a rose. But the kicker? The rose was fake. This is the nocebo in action. Belief itself made her sick. The human brain is wired to fear pain and illness, and nocebos tap directly into those primal anxieties. This can lead to devastating consequences, like the so-called wind turbine syndrome, where people living near turbines report all kinds of ailments. Researchers found that simply telling people that ultrasonic noise is harmful was enough to make them feel ill, even if there was no actual noise at all. Vance's message is clear. Belief has a razor's edge, and unchecked fear can harm us as surely as any pathogen. Hypnosis, in Vance's view, is another fascinating realm where suggestion takes on a life of its own. Forget the Hollywood cliches of pocket watches and mind control. Real hypnosis, Vance says, taps into the brain's ability to focus so deeply that it rewires perception itself. David Patterson, a researcher at the University of Washington, uses hypnosis to help burn victims endure excruciating procedures plunging them into a trance where pain becomes distant, like a forgotten memory. In one jaw-dropping instance, Patterson hypnotized a man with an axe lodged in his neck, guiding him into such a deep state of relaxation that the man felt no pain as doctors worked to remove it. Hypnosis isn't just suggestion, it's total immersion into a state where the brain's response to pain is utterly transformed. Vance explains that for the most hypnotically susceptible individuals, this technique can reach places that traditional painkillers cannot, harnessing the mind's power to tune out even the most severe agony. The brain, as it turns out, is not the flawless recorder of history we might think. Vance shares the unsettling reality that human memory is fragile more akin to a story constantly being rewritten than a file saved to a hard drive. Take the NASA Challenger disaster. Ulrich Neisser, a psychologist, asked his students to recount where they were when they first heard about it. Three years later, when he asked again, their memories had morphed, some dramatically. They recalled themselves in entirely different places, with different people, some even rejecting their original memories as wrong. This is memory's Achilles heel. Every time you recall something, you're essentially re-editing the past. 
Vance suggests that suggestion can slip into this process, planting false memories that feel as real as any others. He reminds us that while memory may feel solid, it is as malleable as clay, vulnerable to the power of belief and expectation. One of the strangest revelations in Vance's journey is the raw power of placebos. We're not talking about a quirky side effect of brain chemistry. This is the power of belief in its purest form. A placebo is more than a sugar pill. It's an experience manufactured by your mind. Think of a person taking a pill and feeling relief from pain almost instantly, even though real medicine wouldn't kick in for minutes. This happens because the brain expects relief and floods the body with endorphins, the body's natural painkillers. Vance even draws on homeopathic remedies as an example, explaining that for some, even a tiny vial of diluted water can trigger a profound healing response. The placebo isn't fake in the sense that nothing is happening. It's real in that it convinces your brain to enact the effect. With the right expectations, your mind can override your body's physical state, turning a pill into a ticket to relief. And that's the raw power of human belief. And then there's the haunting story of a woman haunted by childhood trauma, seeking healing not in medicine, but in homeopathy, in a vial of melted snow. As Vance tells it, this woman had suffered from an unshakable depression, a weight tethered to her past, a frigid night when she and her family fled the Nazis. After years of failed treatments, a homeopath suggests melted snow as her remedy, symbolizing the harrowing cold of that escape. Against all logic, the woman finds peace, her life transformed by the placebo effect. What happened here wasn't just about taking some water, it was about the story the remedy told. Humans are wired to seek meaning, and sometimes healing is about understanding our own narrative. Vance reveals that the snow in the vial was just a prop. The real medicine was the story that gave her life context. This is the crux of Vance's argument, that suggestion doesn't just change how we feel. It can rewrite our stories, leaving us altered in ways that defy easy explanation. Expectation isn't just a mental quirk. It's the linchpin of consumer behavior. Vance dives into a particularly telling study involving milkshakes, where researchers convinced participants they were tasting either a diet shake or a rich, indulgent one. The twist? Both shakes were identical. But here's where it gets wild. Participants who thought they were drinking the diet shake actually produced more ghrelin, a hormone that signals hunger, as if their bodies sensed they were being deprived. Those who believed they had the rich milkshake felt satisfied and sated, their bodies responding to expectation alone. This experiment reveals how companies leverage your brain's suggestibility every day. Labels, colors, and packaging aren't just marketing tools. They're instruments that shape how products feel, taste, and satisfy. When you buy that bottle of wine with the fancy label, it's not just the wine that tastes richer. It's your brain, convinced by the story on the outside. Addiction, as Vance explores, is another place where expectation sets a ruthless trap. It's not just a matter of chemistry. It's an endless loop of craving, fulfillment, and despair built on the brain's relentless expectation of reward. Take alcohol, one of humanity's oldest vices. The addictive cycle involves dopamine, the neurotransmitter that delivers that hit of pleasure only to leave you hollow and needing more. With each drink, the brain learns to expect this reward, which then becomes harder to attain. The more intense the craving, the more the brain dials down its dopamine production, leaving you perpetually chasing a satisfaction you can't quite catch. Vance argues that understanding this cycle offers a glimmer of hope. Addiction, like placebo responses, 
is deeply tied to expectation. If we can shift or reshape these expectations, perhaps addiction can be tackled not just through willpower, but by reprogramming how the brain anticipates reward. From ancient shamans chanting in smoke-filled caves to priests invoking miracles, humanity's oldest healers understood the power of belief. Vance takes us on a whirlwind tour of these age-old practices, suggesting that early healers weren't simply charlatans, but pioneers of suggestion. Rituals, herbs, chants, all tools designed to induce expectation to set the mind on a course of healing. Even now, faith healers in modern times echo these ancient practices, invoking powerful suggestive states in their followers. Placebos and nocebos might be new terms, but they stem from millennia-old traditions where the line between mind and body blurred in ways science is only now beginning to understand. Vance doesn't claim that every ritual or healing practice works in a scientific sense, but he opens the possibility that human belief itself, stoked by story and ritual, might be one of our oldest and most profound medicines. So, how do you harness this power of suggestion in your own life without getting lost in pseudoscience? Vance suggests starting by understanding your own mental landscape. What kinds of stories or symbols resonate with you? Hypnosis could be an interesting tool if you're curious, especially for pain or anxiety, though Vance warns that it's as much art as science. Exploring suggestion doesn't mean diving into every alternative therapy you come across. Rather, it's about knowing your own psychology. If, say, a daily routine of yoga or meditation deeply resonates with you, lean into it. It could activate a self-fulfilling cycle of well-being. Vance also cautions against extremes. Avoid charlatans peddling miracle cures and focus instead on therapies backed by some evidence, even if that evidence includes placebo-like effects. Your brain is wired for belief. Use that wiring wisely and you might just unlock new avenues of healing and self-discovery. In the end, Vance leaves us with a stark truth. The brain is both our greatest ally and our greatest risk. Harnessing expectation can open doors to personal growth, healing, and change, but it's not a path to tread blindly. The power of suggestion can heal, but it can also deceive, bringing false hope or feeding our fears. Vance calls for an ethical approach to suggestion. Use it with caution, self-awareness, and a solid grip on reality. In a world brimming with noise, remember that belief is powerful, but it's no replacement for truth. So as you wander through the promises of placebo, hypnosis, or holistic therapies, keep one eye open. Explore the wonders of expectation, yes, but stay grounded, balancing belief with a clear, discerning mind. All right, Curious Minds, there you have it, Suggestible You by Eric Vance, a book that unravels the science behind belief and reality. Dive into this journey with caution and see just how far your mind can take you. If this book makes you rethink the line between mind and body, then it's done its job, and maybe I have too. So go on, hit like, subscribe, and share your thoughts on how belief has shaped your life. Until next time, keep those minds wide open and those expectations wide-ranging.